Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about something uh, relatively advanced. We're going to talk about uh, free RTOS tasks and the amount of stack space they need. So let's uh, let's dive into this. So imagine that we have a C function and that C function I'm going to call foo and foo calls bar. Bar runs bar returns. Now let's talk about stacks. When a C function runs, that C function has local variables. It has variables which are declared, like for example C here, and that variable lives for as long as the scope of that function exists. So when we call foo, the variable C exists, and then the function foo ends, we return to wherever we called foo from, and the variable C, which was local to foo, evaporates. Now, if we call bar in the middle of foo, then the state of foo has to be remembered, bar will have its own local variables, including variables passed into it from the caller, and uh, bar has its own state, and when bar returns, its state is unwound, and any return values are returned to foo. And when we return to foo from bar, the state of foo should be as it was when bar was called. Now what this means is that we have this concept of data which has to be maintained for the state of the function that is currently running. And that state data for a function is stored in a data area called the stack. Think of the stack as a stack of plates. So when you put a plate on another plate, the plate beneath still remains and we can access the plate on top. You add another plate to the stack, the, the stack continues to grow upwards, the data beneath it remains uh, involatile, it remains as it was, and to get to that data you pop or take the top plate from the stack and you're back at the bottom one. So whenever we have a function, that function is writing data into its stack, uh, that's the state data for the local function, then when we call another function from within our original function, we add more data to the end of the stack that becomes the local state data for that call function, and when the call function returns, we unwind the stack. So here we see we have three variables in our stack. We call from foo into bar. We have some new data on the stack, including the return address of where bar is going to return to. And then when bar finishes, we unwind the stack and we end up back to where we started. Great, that's the high level theory of stacks. Now, uh, in, in a standalone C program, where there is only one thread of operation, the stack usually starts at the bottom of memory, the heap, which is where dynamically allocated storage starts at the top of memory, and the stack can just grow upwards as long as it likes, as long as it doesn't meet the downward coming heap. All is good. However, the ESP32 is a multitasking uh, operating environment. Some might also call this multi-threading. What that means is we can have multiple C functions executing logically concurrently with each other. So I might have multiple instances of multiple functions running concurrently. Now since those functions can't step on each other's storage, we need some mechanism to keep the storage data for those parallel executing functions separate from each other. So that what that means is that in the free RTOS technology, whenever we create a task, that task has associated with it its own stack area. So the task has its own stack. So as a function in one task runs, its state storage is stored on its own, ta on its own stack, while when a function in another free RTOS task runs, its state data is stored in its own task. Now let's have a look at a C program. So here's a C program where we create a task. Here's the task and we call foo, and foo prints out a value how many times it's been called, and then pauses for a little bit, and then calls foo again. So this function never ends, and will of course, of course, eventually crash, because we'll eventually run out of memory. However, what it shows is foo calls foo, which calls foo, which calls foo, and every time we call it, we are increasing the amount of stack storage used by this task. 
So let's run it. Let's uh, go to our environment here, run make monitor, and we're now running. So it's running and it's logging how many times it was called. Good, it's running and it's running and it's running. Everything's good. And then pop, we crash. And we crash with what is known as a stack overflow error. Now, what has happened here is that when we created our task, this is our task, this task was given as one of the parameters the maximum size of the stack or the absolute size of the stack that this task has available to it. As the function is called repeatedly over and over again, the amount of stack space used by that function continues to grow and grow and grow as we keep calling this, this recursively until we have overrun the amount of stack space which we explicitly allocated for this task. And of course, bad things happen, and we detect that, uh, or thankfully, FreeRTOS detects that, and eventually terminates the application. So, that's, that's goodness. The flip side of this is that we're seeing a number of posts to the forum saying, um, oh, my program's crashing, and it's crashing with this kind of error message. What can I do? Well, the answer is that you need to size the amount of stack space you allocate to a task sufficiently large enough for the running of your application. Now, this is a contrived example and will always crash eventually. But, for example, we ran it in this last case. It ran for 58 instances. So, let's double this to 4096. Let's come back here. Let's uh, rebuild the application. It's compiling. It's pushing it to the ESP32. And now we're running it again. Now, all we've done is doubled the amount of stack space available to our function. And we've now passed the point where it crashed before. Uh, let's see where it crashes this time. It's going, it's going, it's going, and approximately twice as much. So it ran for twice as long because it had twice as much stack space available to it. So the point of this tutorial was to bring your mindset up to this kind of error message. If you are running programs or you are writing programs in the ESP32 and you get error messages relating to a stack overflow has occurred and it lists which task which task uh, overflowed, when a task overflows occurred, then you need to look within your own application code, see where you are allocating the task storage, and if necessary, increase the amount of task storage available, uh, stack storage, stack storage available to your task. Now, in the ESP32, if we run make menu config, and uh, I should have prepared this first. I haven't looked here. Let's have a look in 3RTOS. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here are some stack settings. So, for example, here is the amount of stack size available to interrupt service routines. So, this, for example, tells us the size of the stack that we've got available for interrupt service routines. And we look under ESP32 specific. Here is the amount of stack space allocated to our main task. So uh, we can find that we can control the amount of stack space either for the main task and for any tasks we explicitly create, we can pass in the amount of stack space. And that, my friends, is what I wanted to show you. I wanted to bring your mindset up to the notion of the error messages that we see when we run out of stack space and how you can tune your ESP32 environment to increase the amount of stack space available to it. I hope you found this useful, and I look forward to making more of these in the future. Thanks, guys, and bye for now.